All right, so a lot of you guys have been asking what is up with the E batteries, if I've done anything else with them. Uh, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for a quick update on the E batteries, as well as some of the stuff I'll be working on in upcoming videos. So you'll see in front of me here, I have 16 of the E batteries. I'm currently top balancing these 16. Uh, so I've got them all connected in parallel. You can see the connections here. All the positives are on the top and the negatives are on the bottom. So I'm charging them with an iCharger X6, putting in 30 amps, and you can see it's been running for about two days now, so I've put in 1,365 amp hours, and that's coming out and going through a circuit breaker for added safety. And then the positive is going up to the right side of the battery bank, and I have the negative going to the left side, that way the current is balanced across the entire bank. And then I've got the two balance wires, which pretty much just report a voltage back to the iCharger. And those are connected in the center of the battery. And that helps to take into account voltage drop over the wires from the eye charge to the positive and negative terminals. Just to make sure there's no expansion of the cells, I've built this frame with 2x4 on both sides, which runs the length of the 16 batteries. And then I've got it blocked on the end with a piece of 2x6, the exact width of the batteries. And it's mounted up 1 and 5 8 inch from the floor to make sure that block sits right in the middle of the cell. So the plan is to continue charging these. It's going to take several days for this to top balance properly. Once this charger shuts off, uh, I'll restart it several times because the discharge curve of lithium iron phosphate, once it hits 3.65 volts, it tends to drop a little bit and you want to retain it at that higher voltage because that's going to be what allows the cells to balance out to the same state of charge. So the idea is going to be to keep charging it up until 3.65 volts, allow it to balance until it rests somewhere around 3.5 to 3.55 volts. Now there are 16 batteries here. I did purchase 32, so I'm planning to balance the other 16 the same way. And then when I build the 16S2P, I'll take one from this balance set and one from the other balance set and pair those together. That way I'm making sure I retain the balance. I'm not, you know, having two separate balanced groupings, if that makes sense. And the reason for that is simply because I didn't have enough bus bars. I really should have ordered a double set of these bus bars, but I didn't think about that at the time. A lot of you guys have also been asking what I'm doing for a BMS. I do have something in the works, I just can't talk about it yet, so more will be coming on that hopefully very, very soon. Once these are done balancing, I'll show you how I plan to compress them and build them into blocks, probably blocks of eight. Uh, and then the video following that will be the BMS wiring and explanation. So I know that doesn't directly answer some of the questions I've been getting asked, but I just wanted to put out this very quick update so you can see what I'm up to and what's going on with this project. So one thing I'm still debating that I particularly like your guys' feedback on are these stud screws that I'll be using uh, to connect the bus bars. So the way this is supposed to work is you put your uh, Allen head or hex wrench, whatever you want to call it, in the top part and hold this, and then you can tighten down your nut. You know, I don't have a torque wrench that's an actual wrench. My torque wrench is a ratchet, so it goes down over the nut. And I know they do sell specific wrenches for that purpose, but instead of doing that, I was debating uh, and then putting some red Loctite on uh, such that it holds this screw into the post once it's inserted. Now, I have no plans to remove these studs, so I'm not concerned about it being permanent. And the torque on these is only somewhere around 35 to 40 inch-pounds, something like that. So there's no way that... Uh, that amount of torque is going to break the red Loctite. So what do you guys think about that idea? Do you think I should Loctite these studs in? Or do you think I should just leave them as is uh, and use the wrench on the top? When you put them in, the, there's not many threads and they do wobble a little bit. So I'm thinking that maybe the Loctite will also add some additional structural support to holding this stud in. I know it won't be much, but I think every little bit uh, matters when you're dealing with aluminum posts like this. So yeah, please let me know what you think of that idea. There are a lot of things in the works for the next month or two. I have quite a few batteries I'll be testing, reviewing, uh, different builds I'll be working on. I've got an inverter coming I'll be testing. So definitely stay tuned for those videos. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And uh, one thing I also want to mention is that there is a huge potential here if there were a short circuit. So throughout the balancing process, I do have these bus bars covered, both of them. Uh, I was using duct tape for that. You can use pretty much anything. Uh, I just pulled off the tape for the purposes of this video, so don't worry. I do have these covered for safety. Anyway, hit that like button. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions on this build or anything else, please leave those below, and I'll catch you later.